Israel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. Then entered in those wise men three, full reverently upon their knee, and offered there in his presence their gold and myrrh and frankincense. That glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth To touch their harps of gold Peace on the earth, goodwill to men From heaven's all-gracious King The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing Silent night, holy night All is calm, all is bright Round yon virgin mother and child so tender and mild sleep in heavenly peace sleep in heavenly
theme in all the world is the love of God. There are simply no words that truly describe what it means to be loved by our Creator. But when Jesus was born in Bethlehem that first Christmas night so long ago, His coming made, made it possible for each of us to know God's love as we never could have otherwise. Father, but he didn't cling to his crown and his throne. He emptied himself and came in the form of a servant. In response to our need and in obedience to his Father, he chose love over everything. He has been surrounded by gold and ivory. He's known gates of pearl and looked upon the crystal sea. And if he dreams of heaven as he sleeps upon the hay, I imagine that its glory sure seems far away. The stable is his palace, and the manger is his throne. There are no jewels to crown him, to bear 
The songs of angels sung since the beginning of time still exalt the love of God. The songs of the saints of all the ages rise in the chorus of adoration and gratitude.
Philippians chapter number two tonight. Philippians chapter number two. We're going to come at uh, the Christmas story. Uh, uh, well, not actually the Christmas story, but we're as we're thinking about Christmas, um, we're going to come at it a little bit different than what you would normally hear on uh, on an evening whenever we're getting closer and closer to Christmas. But I think it's it's very important that we see what uh, the sacrifice that our Lord and our Savior did. This passage uh, talks about Christ's self-emptying, and we're going to talk about that here tonight. Let's go ahead and read Philippians chapter number 2. We'll pick up reading there in verse number 5, and we'll read down through verse number 8. The Bible says this, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you again this evening. God, we thank you for allow, allowing us to be here. Thank you for this time of the, of the year, Lord. We're celebrating our Lord and Savior, the birth of our Lord and Savior. And Lord, I ask that you would help us to look at, <clears throat> at your birth a little bit different tonight. Lord, help us to realize a little bit more of the sacrifice that you have made so that you can bring us back to you, so that you can give us a home in heaven, so that you can forgive us of our sins. So we can be in your presence. Lord, I ask if there's anyone here tonight that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I ask that today, this evening, would be their evening of salvation. Help us to honor and glorify you with everything we do and everything we say tonight. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. So this is the uh, passage in the Bible that speaks most about uh, the self-emptying of Jesus Christ. Uh, whenever he was born on this earth. And this is, this is what's called the kenosis of Jesus Christ, and that is the self-emptying of him. And it's, it's pretty incredible when you think about who Jesus is and really what he sacrificed when he came down to this earth. Hey, listen, can, can I tell you tonight that Jesus is God that came down from heaven He is God himself. And this is one of the things, uh, this is one thing we, we don't normally hear about during Christmas message. Uh, but I think that it's very important for us to know a little bit more about who he is and what he truly sacrificed whenever he came. Jesus was not just another man. But he was the son of God and he was very man, a uh, very very man and very God at the same time. So tonight, what, what was it that Jesus emptied himself of? And I can tell you tonight that our passage speaks nothing about him emptying his, uh, his attributes as God. Jesus Christ never, never got rid of any of his attributes, of his of his deity attributes. If he did, that would no longer make him God. And I can tell you tonight, without a shadow of a doubt, that Jesus, whenever he was here on this earth, he was 100% man, and he was still 100% God. But what was it that he emptied himself of that on that faithful night? A little over 2,000 years ago, Number one, he emptied himself of his identity. Of his identity. There in verse number uh, six and verse number five, uh, excuse me, five and verse number six, we see that. He, again, he says there, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And let me stop there for just a second. I don't know if you've noticed as you read uh, Paul's writings, it's very rare when Paul uses just the name Jesus when he's talking about Jesus Christ. Most of the time, whenever he's talking about Jesus Christ, he usually identifies him as Jesus Christ or Christ 
Jesus. Now, this is very significant. Christ is uh, the Greek word for Christos. Excuse me, the Greek word for Christ is Christos. And uh, it has the same meaning as the Hebrew title Messiah. It refers to Christ as the anointed one. And Jesus Christ is recognized as our high priest, our redeemer, our mediator, and our intercessor here in the New Testament. Jesus was the, was the Lord's birth name given to him by God the Father. And it means Yahweh or Jehovah saves or the Lord is salvation. The name Jesus speaks of his person and declares his deity. The name of Jesus declares his deity as the Son of God. Again, looking there in verse number 6, the Bible says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, who was made... uh, Excuse me. Let let me ask you this. Who was God... I just gave you the answer. Who was Jesus before, or what was Jesus known as before he came to this earth? He was known as God. The word goes right along with it. But he was known as God. And many of the Jews had a great difficulty with this whenever he came to this earth. And he said that he was the son of God. Hey, the, the Jewish people, they knew what Jesus was talking about whenever he said that, I, that he was the Son of God. He was saying, that, listen, he is equal to God because he absolutely was. He absolutely was. And this is what led the Jewish people uh, to go ahead and consent to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, literally God in the flesh. Although he dwelt among men in human form, he possessed all the deity and character of God. His very essence was that of God. The word form here in verse number 6 speaks of the outward appearance. Christ was the embodiment of God in human flesh. When the Bible says that, that Jesus was equal with God, can I tell you this, this evening that, that, that Jesus Christ was not stealing anything that wasn't His. That is who He was. And can I tell you tonight, that is who He is. He is very God. He was and still, and still is God. In John chapter 14 Verse number 9, Jesus Christ was talking to Philip and because Philip asked, he said, he said, show us the Father. And Jesus' response was to him. Jesus saith unto him, in John chapter 14, verse number 9, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. And then John, in John chapter, uh, in John chapter number uh, 10, in verse number 30, Jesus Christ himself says, I and the Father are one. When Jesus Christ came to this earth, his identity changed. He was known as God. He received all the glory of God. He received all the honor of God. And whenever he came to this earth, that fateful night, a little over 2,000 years ago, his identity changed. Then he was known as a man. A man. His identity was changed, but not only was his identity changed, not only did did Jesus Christ empty himself of his identity, but he emptied himself of his appearance as well. Verse number uh, number 4 through verse number 7, 
The Bible says, Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. The Bible tells us in John chapter 4, verse number 24, God is a spirit. The Bible says that no one has ever seen God face to face. Anyone that, that would ever see God face to face would die immediately because of his glory. John chapter 24, excuse me, John chapter 4, verse number 24 again. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yet when Jesus came to the earth, he morphed. That is, he changed. His appearance changed. He took on a form. He became flesh. He became like you and I. He became human. He took on flesh and blood. No longer was he just a spirit. Now he has physical attributes. And can I tell you, though Jesus Christ has, has left this earth, he is, he is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God up in heaven, he still has physical attributes. He still has his body, but it's a glorified body. And one day, we get to have one too, because we will be like him. And oh, am I looking forward to that day. In the New Testament, we read that God is light. This is, this is what God looked like in 1 John chapter number 1 and verse number 5. Uh, <clears throat> this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. In John chapter 1, verse number 4 through verse number 9, the Bible tells us, In Him was life, and, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, <clears throat> that all men through Him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Hey, listen, Jesus, not only, not only did he uh, empty himself of his identity, but his appearance. Now he was veiled in flesh. That light that is God was veiled in flesh. And on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus took a select group of His disciples up, up with Him and, they, and He showed it, them His glory. He revealed His glory. In Matthew chapter 17, in verse number 1 and verse number 2, we see that. And in verse number 2, the Bible says, And His face did shine, this is when Jesus Christ and a select few of his disciples were up on the Mount of, of Transfiguration. Uh, Jesus Christ showed them just a little bit, a little glimpse of, the, of his glory. Did he show them face to face? Absolutely not, because they would have died instantly. But he showed them just a little bit of who he really is. Of his glory. Again, it says in verse number 2, And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. Then John speaks about this in John chapter 1, verse number 14. And he says, we beheld his glory. We beheld his glory. You might ask, well, why, didn't, why didn't Jesus reveal himself to everybody? That's a pretty good question, I think. But I think Ezekiel helps us to understand exactly why he didn't. In Ezekiel chapter number 1, 
verse number 27 and verse number 28, Ezekiel says this, And I saw, this is Ezekiel chapter 1, verse number 27 and verse number 28, And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within, within it, from the appearance of, of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Then look at this. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face. I heard a voice of one that spake. If Jesus would not avail himself in the flesh, his, his bright, the brightness of his glory would have preceded him and everywhere that he went. And men and women and children all over the world would have all automatically fallen down on their face and worshipped him. You might say, wait, what's wrong with that? Well, God wants people to worship Jesus not because they have to, but because they want to. And because they have the opportunity to. I can tell you today that the day will come. The day will come when we all will see Jesus in his glory. What does the Bible say about that? Romans chapter 14 verse number 11. Romans chapter 14 verse number 11 says every knee will bow and every tongue Confess that Jesus is Lord. Hey, can I tell you, again, there's coming a day when one day every single person, whether they're a believer or not, they will bow the knee. And they will say, Jesus is Lord and Savior. Jesus came in, in the form that he did so that we can have a choice so that we can decide what will I do with Jesus? What will I do with Jesus? He became flesh and blood so that he could die for us. His appearance changed. Now he was veiled with flesh and blood. There's never ever been a time when God did not exist. There's never ever been a time when God died. He's always existed. From eternity past to eternity future. But the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. i tell you tonight, Jesus Christ came to this earth. And whenever he hung on that cross, he took his last breath. When he said, it is finished, he hung his head and his flesh died. When Jesus Christ came to this earth, he emptied himself of his identity. His appearance changed. Not only did his appearance change, but his address changed. Hey, as Paul continues to speak of Jesus, he says, Be and being found in fashion as a man, in verse number 8 of our text, that means that people here on this earth, human beings, uh, we could see him. Now listen, God left his throne in heaven. And he came to this earth. Listen, 
The sacrifice. We can't even imagine the, the sacrifice that God truly paid for us. Hey, listen, his identity changed. He was known as God, always has been known as God in, in eternity past up to that point. He was known as God. He was worshipped as God. He was glorified as God. He was honored as God. He was the light. The Bible says in, in, in heaven there is no sun. There is no moon. Why? Because the brightness of our God. His appearance changed. And his address changed. Hey, he was sitting on the throne in heaven where he received all honor, glory, worship, praise, everything you can think of that God, that God deserves and that God should have. He was there receiving it. And he came down from his throne to this little place, little insignificant speck whenever you look at the whole universe. To this place called earth. What an amazing God we serve. What an amazing God we serve. His address changed from heaven to earth. For you and for me. Man. We can't imagine. We can't fathom. The, sac the true sacrifices that he sacrificed to give us a home in heaven. And then lastly tonight, not only did his <clears throat> identity change and his appearance change and his address change, but his activity changed. Hey, don't get me wrong. When, when, when Jesus Christ was still in this world, let me tell you, he was still 100% God and he was still 100% in control. Of absolutely everything. If God let, let loose of his control for just a half a second, there would be no more earth, no more universe, no more nothing. It's because of his power that this earth is what it is, is, is staying where it is. It's because of his power because there are, that there are stars in the sky and, and a moon and a sun. It's because of His power that all of these things don't just come together and blow up. He's holding it in His hand. But He took on an activity He's never taken on before. The Bible says again there in verse number... Let me get to it right quick. Verse number 8, being found... In fashion, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And verse number 7 as well tells us, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Think about that for a second. The God of this universe... The God that created absolutely everything became a servant on this earth so that you and I can have a home in heaven. Wow. Wow. He became a servant to all people on earth. He didn't cling to what belonged to him, and what belonged to him was his throne. He let it go, and he became a servant. Everything about Jesus' life, his earthly life, illustrates his humility. Think about that. The creator of everything, humbled himself, became a servant. He was born in a humble little town. 
He was born in a barn, in a manger. He slept in caves. His pillow was a rock. Hey, can I remind you, we're talking about the creator of everything. He took on a lowly trade as a carpenter. And he died and was buried in a borrowed tomb. He gave the ultimate sacrifice in service to you and to me. He gave his life for us. Verse 8 says, that He humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Hey, can I tell you tonight that he had a choice? Hey, he was still God. At any moment, at any time in his life, he could have said, hey, you know what? Mm, that's enough. I'm done. They, these people, they don't, they don't recognize me. They don't respect me. They don't... Un I, I, I've had enough. I'm done. I'm, I'm going back up to my throne in heaven. He still had a choice. Even that day, whenever he was, he, was, he was made to carry his cross to Golgotha. And he laid that cross down. And he laid down on top of that cross. Hey, I, they didn't have to fight him to get on that cross. I think that as weak as he was because of all of the blood that is already shed out of his body and the beatings that he had endured, I think that he willingly, he willingly crawled upon that cross. Hey, this is the God that we serve. He crawled upon that cross and he stretched out his hands and he said, hey, this is for you. This is for you. What an amazing God that we serve. His activities changed. In going through all the self emptying that Jesus Christ went through, we need to understand one thing that through it all, He changed his identity, changed his appearance, changed his address, changed his activity. He never, ever stopped being God. He was always God at every moment in the life of Jesus Christ here on this earth. He was still sovereign God. Still in control of everything. Though he chose to become a servant and take on human flesh and blood so that he could pay your sin debt and mine. What an amazing God we serve. I, I want you to think for just a second, and we're closing with this. Think for just a second of all the religions in the entire world. Of all the religions, of all the little G gods that there are out here in this world. You think, about, you think about this for just a second. Is there any other one? Any other one of these little G gods that said, hey, I'm going to die for my followers? None of them. None of them but the one true God. All of the other little G gods in this world, they say, no, you got to do this, you do this, you do this, you do that. But the one true God says, hey, you know what? I've made all the sacrifices. I've come down to this earth. I've changed my identity. I've changed my, my appearance. I've changed my address. I've changed my, my, the things that I do. And I have, I have come to this earth and I am dying 
sacrificing for you. And all you have to do is accept it. What a God we serve. So think about that this Christmas. Jesus Christ, when he came to this earth and he was born on this earth, think about those things that he gave up to come and save you and me from our sins. Maybe you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Let me tell you, he did all of this for you. Because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That death is eternal separation from God forever and ever and ever in a real place called hell. And God does not want that for anyone. So Jesus came. He hung on that cross. He died and was buried and rose again to give you, to give me, life eternal. If you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, I can tell you tonight you have that opportunity. I know that most, most of you here tonight are, 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 are regulars. But I know that even regular people in church, they think they're saved because they come to church. They think they're saved because they sing the songs. They give their tithes. Hey, but do you really know Jesus Christ? Has there really, truly been a time in your life where, where you can absolutely say, hey, you know what, Pastor? I may not be able to tell you, because I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I can't tell you the exact date and time, but I can tell you, I can tell you where I was, when it happened. I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I was absolutely sincere. I placed 100% of my faith and what Jesus Christ did for me. What about you? Do you have one of those days in your life? If you don't, you can have it beginning tonight. If you would please stand with your heads bowed and your eyes closed tonight. I'll stay in the old time way. Standing firm.